Talk about putting things together. Boy, I'll tell you what, every time we get an opportunity, he's been torn his ass off. He was in Phoenix, I think, last week. If I'm not mistaken, either Phoenix or Tucson, everywhere I look, Ice Cube is still torn, man, and still shaking the world up. Let's bring our friend in here now, Ice Cube. He's shaking it up with Big Three, touring all around. Hey, Cube, you, you're still doing it, man. You're still touring. Hey, man, don't nothing change but the date. You know what I mean? We keep it moving. <laughs> we keep it moving. Hey, Cube, do you still have the same passion for it? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, man. You know, I love it. All aspects of it, you know, from, you know, doing songs, movies, uh, getting on stage. You know, now we need deep in sports. Um, so what's not the love? I mean, absolutely. And you know what? I love what you guys do and what you do. You know, you've got your hand in so much stuff right now. Big three, man, coming around the corner here, man. Are we going to see any new yeah. additions? Are we going to see anything different this time around? What, what, what does big three have in store for it? Man, great play. You know, the thing is, is we play the game like it's supposed to be played. So the game is calibrated great. You know, we don't have to do it. You know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel at all. You know, our games are amazing. Um, first to 50, so that that works. No garbage minutes, because there are no minutes. Then we have you know, our four-point circles, which, you know, fans love. Um, bring the fire. Going one on one to challenge a foul is a cool little wrinkle for three on three. So, you know, we've calibrated the game over the last seven years, um, and we think the game is great. And, and we have additional players. And what's cool about the big three each year, the play gets better and better. You know, guys know what they need to do to win now, uh, coaches know what they need to do to win, the strategies. You know, our games last about an hour, so they're bite-sized, you know, for, for, you know, anybody that's in the gaming and having fun. And so, you know, it's, it's really, you know, right. It's, a, it's just really about uh, throwing the ball out there and letting them get down. So I got a text message from Paul Pierce, and Paul said, once you, once you send me some of that Caitlin, Caitlin Clark money, and you get Paul Pierce to come out there, and I'll, I'll play big three hoop with you now. Nah, I think Paul's retired. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, uh, I tried to get Paul in the league when he first retired, and um, you know he didn't get back to me. So I thought I said, okay, that's that's my answer. He on the island somewhere, and so uh, we definitely, we definitely cool on that. Um, but he can still play, you know, we just not, we're not going to spin that, you know, I would love for him to ball. I would love for him to play. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a great player if he put his mind to it and, and he's ready to go. Um, and so, you know, I wouldn't turn him down, but he, he got to be ready for the big three. QB did offer Caitlin um, that money. And I thought it was bold. I thought it was awesome. I mean, especially with the money that the women are making in the WNBA now, I mean, that would be something different. It'd be like, to me, I compared it to when Wilt went to the Globetrotters and then went into the NBA because he didn't want to play that one year at Kansas. So he went and played for the Globetrotters. I thought that that may have given her a good springboard to go in because just like Diane. Hey, Dan, said, Dan, no, nobody can pay Will $5 million to go to the Globe trying to so, <laughs> Hey, don't compare us. Don't compare us to that. You know what I mean? It's a real offer, you know, real professional league. She'll be breaking a lot of ground, you know, without, you know, money aside, um, breaking uh, a mental barrier in, in people's mind uh, where the women can, can compete you know, at this level uh, for money, you know? So it's um, it's a different animal, you know? I, I know, um, you know, it's a lot to take on 
for a young athlete to not only, you know, play, um, you know, in our league, I mean, playing the WNBA, but also try to, you know, break barriers in a league like ours. It's, uh, you know, it's physical, you know, it's, it's not, it's not a cakewalk. And, 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 and the, um, the opposition ain't going to be getting out your way like the Washington generals. So, <laughs> you know, they're going to come at her if she plays. Hey, I, I, I will say this too, you know, everyone always looks at MJ cube and goes, this guy here revolutionized the M and I go, no, he did not It was bird and magic because it was Lakers Celtics. It was white, black, the hit, from French Lick versus the smiling Magic Johnson. There's an equity to that, and there's a financial to that where you can prosper and benefit like the NBA did. The NBA just didn't sell a great rivalry, right, Cube? They sent black – they they invested in black and white, and there's where the white dollars came from back at them with the NBA. I mean, they were doing tape-delayed finals, Cube, when 79 yeah. before those guys jumped on with the Sonics. I mean – so that has I mean, to be know, part of it. Well, thank God that that wasn't all they can hang their hat on. You know, the Lakers and the Celtics had a rivalry that went back to the 60s, maybe the 50s. So, you know, that wasn't all they was hanging their hat on. You know, that's what, you know, maybe the people uh, kind of, um, you know, I guess use that as extra fuel to, to scream and yell for their team. But at the end of the day, you know, this is not a, you know, it's not a black white thing. It's really about being a smart businessman, a smart league, um, and breaking barriers. Um, you know, to me, it's a win win for everybody if she plays, uh, because um, it it will, you know, break barriers. But it's but it also, um, you know, open up the minds of people when it comes to you know, can can some women play uh, men professional sports? You know, we don't know. And, and so, Cube, it was ha, has her people gotten back with you? Um, ha, ha, they showed any kind of interest in it? Well, we've been talking, you know, to different, you know, channels. Put it that way. Um, we're still looking for a face to face with her and the family. We don't. We don't think anybody could could uh, really communicate, you know, what we're offering without without a face to face. So, you know, we're still hoping to get that. Is the NBA getting in the way? I don't know what the NBA is doing. How come they don't like you, Cube? Uh, the NBA. Well, you know, if you talk to the players, they love me. You talk to the coaches, they love me. You talk to the GMs, they love me. Talk to the owners, they love me. Um, the only problem we're having is with the top brass, uh, with Adam Silver, you know, maybe Mark Tatum, I don't know. But, you know, we got the tip-top brass who sees us as a threat, looks at the big three like, uh, like boxing, looked at UFC. Uh, and think we are a threat. And um, as it stands today, we're not. Are you a threat? Is no. it you? What's, what's threatening about me? You know, well, I'll um, tell you this. I'm treating, uh, so I mean, I'm fantasy. treating everybody fair. I'm treating athletes, coaches, uh, and the people that's in the league fair and I'm given a lot of opportunities uh, with this league. So I don't know how I could be a threat. Well, then why do I get a conversation with Sean McManus going, who's stepping down head of CBS saying that the league is pressuring television networks not to air your games? Which league? The NBA? Uh, TV networks are getting pressure from the NBA not to air your games. Why? Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. You have to ask them, you know, maybe they don't want us to present a better product. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, that, I mean, that's I, the only I, thing I, mean, I can, you, I can, I mean, you're still shaking uh, it up, see. dude. I mean, I'm here. 
that's what it's all about. You know, it's not about just going with the status quo. Um, it's a, you know, I got something cool. Like, why not? Ten weeks in the summer, yeah, it's not hurting nobody. Everybody's having fun. Uh, people are entertained, making money. Um, where's the problem? Cube, what's what's the biggest issue you run into in running this league? Again, like I told you before, we get the rock on, and I talk to him all the time. He said that UFL thing is just absolutely the biggest challenge he's ever gone through. I mean, all the way down to color of uniforms, to the yeah. sideline. I mean, every little thing right. has to be dealt with, and it's so challenging, especially on his time, and especially with a guy like you that has his hands in so much stuff. What's your biggest challenge running big three? Um, I mean, dealing with closed minds. That's my biggest <sighs> challenge, you know. So dealing with closed minds, dealing with, uh, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, collusion and, you know, this and that. That's my biggest issue. As far as the fans, they love it. The players, they love it. They, You know, the game is fun to play and fun to watch. We've elevated three-on-three three all over the world, you know. We did this before they put three-on-three three in the Olympics. And so we've done a great thing for the game, you know. Matter of fact, the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame agrees by, you know, presenting me with the Ice Cube Impact Award, which will be given out every year. So I've done nothing but uh, change the game for the better. What's that award mean to you, Cube? I mean, because I saw that. And what an honor to have that put on, having an honor named after you when it comes to making impact. I mean, you're talking about well-rounded people i'm assuming you're gonna have to have that award it's not just about going up and shooting hoops it's about going around and filling people's souls with being a well-rounded human i mean that's got to mean a lot to you it does you know it's something that i didn't think about in starting this league we just wanted to do the right thing um honor our heroes um and and you know Give the fans something to look forward to in those dog days of summer when the, when the <laughs> finals is over and we're waiting for the NFL regular season. Um, and so, you know, I'm trying to make the world a better place. And it's funny that I'm getting all this opposition. And, you know, the sports media, for the most part, is uh, ignoring or trying to downplay what we've built uh, over the last eight years. And, um, you know, it's frustrating, but, you know, I'm here for the long haul. May I ask you, Cube, I got two last questions for you, and I want to ask you a hard question because I DM'd Aaron Rodgers about this about three months ago, and I want to ask you something here. Do you think that the media and some of the people, like at the NBA, look at your vac stance that you had and they – seemingly don't really support people who are in that camp and the media I'm talking more so than anything. And even Hollywood to some extent has actually gone after you in certain ways. I mean, do you feel that that is also part of the whole book of what you're dealing with over these last couple of years? I don't know what it is, but I know it's always some. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, when you weren't at the Super Bowl, I said, no, that shit's wrong. How could you have the best rapper in the history of Los Angeles? Not there. And you're like, well, hey, man, I'm part of the out crowd. <laughs> or so, I I'm mean, like, when I, you know, at the end of the day, I wasn't offended about not being at the Super Bowl. I was. I was, I was actually glad I wasn't asked because – when I do the Super Bowl, I want to do the Super Bowl. I don't want to be a guest for nobody. <laughs> yeah. hey, you, you're no warm up back there, right? <laughs> right no, no. no. Cube, uh, movies. What are you working on? Are you working on anything um, coming up here where people are going to be able to catch you? Well, we always got our you know hand in the cookie jar. 
working Get on that Doc Ellis movie going, <laughs> Cube. We're working on it. You know, we it, it's a you know, movies go in stages. And, you know, sometimes they gotta catch a catch a, a wave, so to speak. So, you know, we'll catch it. Man, well, I saw your kid at WrestleMania 40, and we're based in Philly. And so just so you know. There he was there, and I'm I'm talking to Triple H, and I go, hey, is the kid, does the kid have a good? Yeah, no, no, he's he was all hooked up. So I didn't realize he was a big wrestling fan. Are you a wrestling fan? Old school, you know. what I mean, I used to love, you know, Jimmy Superfly Snooker, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and and uh, the the Iron Sheik, and you know the old school dudes. Uh, so. I don't know the new new dudes too much. My son, he's he love it. He's all up in it. You know, they need to they need to give him some kind of job in the promotion and marketing or storytelling, dramatic department, because he he uh, knows all the storylines and where they should go. Boy, I could see Ice Cube doing being a writer for that, putting it putting the show on for them guys. Hey Cube, big three. When does it start up again and where can people find it? Website and all. June 15th, you can go to big3.com slash tickets. Uh, this year, we're going to be in Oakland, Tampa, Baltimore, Newark, New Jersey, Anaheim, California, Portland, Cincinnati, San Antonio, Nashville, and Boston. Fantastic stuff. Keep it's always awesome catching up, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Anytime. Later, you got- Dan. Take it easy. You got it. Our good friend Ice Cube, man. He always finds time for us. Love that stuff there. We are going to roll back into the headline stories. How about that, guys? Just He just texts me. goes, yo, what's up? I said, all right. <laughs> yeah. Why not? You guys deserve Ice Cube, right? All right. Let's take a quick time out. We'll reset. Back into the news of the day. Also, Gary Cobb from... Fox 29 in Philadelphia will join us as he always does on a Monday at 4.30 Eastern time. Do me a favor, hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show.